I love a good skinny knife. So the Sidibe Lazar is a good skinny knife. It's designed by Elijah Isham. It is made by the Wee Knife Company under their sub-brand Sidibe Knives. And it is made of pretty good materials and it's made very well. And uh, it's got a couple of things I'd suggest that could improve it or things you might need to know about. So it's an old fashioned knife review. That's right, let's get into it. Let's say, uh, you know what? Let's even take it down to the tabletop because it's hard to show off a knife when all this is merging with that vivid purple. So let's take a closer look. So the Civivi Laser, a mid-sized in terms of length, but a small size in terms of tallness or height. And it's a, a aesthetic that I really, really like myself. Uh, I love the looks of this blade. Uh, first positive thing about it, it looks unlike a lot of other knives. There are a few other good looking skinny knives. I like the bend in the handle he's got here, and I like the uh, the uh, swoop down here, which is actually highly ergonomic. And even this little hump back here does fit nicely in the palm. This is, for a slim knife, it's quite a comfortable slim knife. Looking at the blade there, the blade's got like a Persian style, upswept sort of blade, very sort of unique, not a huge amount of other knives looking like this at the moment. Uh, and then you've got this uh, you know, stylized triangle hole there. It doesn't do anything. It's just for appearance. Uh, you could never, you could, you'd be better off if you were two hand opening it, just grabbing the blade there. It's not serving any functional purpose apart from, I guess, something to break up the solid colors. Uh, and it looks fine to me. The deep carry pocket clip works very well. It's the same as you get on a lot of these Civivi knives. There are skeletonized liners inside, which I believe are titanium. And then you've got a, a 10CR15CO MOV steel. Now that's a steel that's new to me. So let's take a slight diversion to the knife lab. We'll put a nice mirror polished edge on it and see how it performs in the rope cut test. This is the edge test for the, who names this steel? How do they even come up with them? For the 10CR15C MO, no, 10CR15CO MOV. So this is the edge test for that. We're going to do my usual edge test, surprisingly enough, where we cut twisted sisal rope until a knife using the affected portion, no longer easily slices a held sheet of paper like so. Uh, I really don't have a metric on how this is gonna do. I think it's got a bit more carbon in it than perhaps your, your eight or your nine CRs. Sometimes that equates to more edge retention, but it also may not. So let's see how it does. New steel, how exciting. Feeling a bit slow just now. Still going, still going. Two hundred. Oh, yep. 
effective. Cool. Alrighty, so on the affected portion, it's now no longer slicing easily a held sheet of paper. Uh, that's 200 cuts with a 17 degree polished edge, the same edge that I put on all these test knife testing uh, samples, and that puts it in about the same category as like a decent VG10 or something similar with a polished edge. It's fine, it's a non-powdered steel, it's a budget knife or, like, or a lower cost knife still, so I would say that is adequate. So you've got a very good looking knife, you've got a blade that is made of quite good materials, given that it is a lower to let's say mid cost knife uh, this was about 111 dollars in australia i think for me probably in america they're 50 bucks i don't know in australia just given the way of the world at the moment is things are a little bit more expensive that being said i, I think the money sort of is all inflated a bit as well so um kind of works out but there is still some definite definite shipping and duty costs uh, imposed when buying knives over here uh, the assembly is spot on i haven't noticed a single flaw with the uh, mechanisms or how everything is fitted together it's done very well and um as i said i really like the colors and the styles and things like that if this knife is looking good to you then you can buy it quite confidently knowing that it's going to be well put together if you're after a knife as you know an occasional user of an edc knife and you know just something that's fun to play with then this is certainly a great addition to your collection Something that I would say I would improve on if I could redo this nice knife myself, I would take a couple of millimeters off the blade thickness. The blade, whilst not being thick compared to a lot of other knives, it's about as thick as a lot of knives with blades that are often twice as tall. So when you have a blade that is not tall, that is quite narrow, they have less time to get from that thick spine down to that nice uh, sort of edge apex there. Uh, I put a 17 degree edge on it, and so the bevel is a little bit taller, which is fine. I don't mind that that look at all myself, but it still doesn't really correct uh, some, geom some geometrical issues that, uh, you know, when you're cutting certain materials, do rear their heads. So an example is I will do a, a vinyl tubing cut test with a knife when I review it, using the sharpest edge that I can put on it. And uh, when knife is thicker behind the edge, the test is not as enjoyable to do, that the cut is not as easy or as fun to make. Uh, and then for a purpose of demonstration, I swapped it out with the Almar Falcon, which is a blade of about the same height, um, but is you know, almost half as thick and it cuts through sort of much easier. It's an easier push through. Uh, yeah, the handle on this one is nicer than on the Falcon. It fills the handle a bit more, so that does counteract any sort of harder pushes that you have to make. But I would still much prefer a slightly thinner blade. Just go lighter duty for smaller uh, skinny knives like these. No one's buying this knife thinking they're gonna go and you know use it at the building site, I wouldn't say. Um, that being said, I have used it for a lot of dirty jobs and a lot of um, you know rougher stuff, and it has held up very well. Uh, the steel it seems very uh, stainless. It's been cutting lots of acidic soils and things like that, and uh, not a huge amount of um, tarnishing or anything has gone on. There's a mild stonewash effect that may be assisting somewhat, or at least uh, resisting darkening, or you know seeming like it is already slightly dark, so kind of taking the edge off of that a bit. And overall, uh, I think for the price and you know, the general uh, uh, equation here, in terms of materials, in terms of quality, I think you're getting a pretty good deal. I like what Civivi does with a lot of their budget knives, and I like that they give designers like Elijah Isham a bit of a free reign to make some, some wackier stuff. We has been very supportive of Elijah and have made all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful uh, creations that he's dreamt up. So yeah, the... Civivi Laser is a very competent, very appealing little uh, mid-cost knife. One thing I always struggle with is with mid-cost knives, uh, I kind of always begin to feel like they're a little bit interchangeable. This one does enough different and it's quite a, quite a unique piece uh, to sound like a completely wanky art critic, but it is something that uh, I think will hold a place in my collection rather than sort of just move on through. It reminds me of, I like it in the same way I like the Real Steel Metamorph, which is another sort of interesting slender knife. So overall, a very positive review for this guy. I like it a lot. And if you like how it looks, rest assured it is uh, well made and it will perform uh, within the realm of EDC tasks quite well. I wouldn't just uh, you know, knock it if it had a slightly thinner blade. And that's about all I've got for it and for you on this knife. Thanks for watching.